It's been a while since I made a video about the Mac, and as I was researching ideas for a Mac video, I started to come across loads of little tips and tricks, some that I'd forgotten all about, that I reckon most Mac owners have absolutely no idea about. So I thought, I'll just bring 20 of them together and share them here with you. Oh, and if you have any that you think are good, and I don't include them, please consider leaving it in a comment. Okay, let's get into it. If you press Command, Shift, and the number four on your keyboard, you'll get that crosshair tool that lets you draw a box around the area that you want to screenshot. As soon as you let go of the mouse button, your Mac captures the screenshot and shows the preview in the bottom left corner like usual. But here's a useful twist. This time, after pressing Command, Shift, and four, and dragging out the area that you want, press and hold the Control key just before you release your mouse. That will still capture the screenshot, but instead of saving it to your desktop or showing a preview, it copies it straight to your clipboard, ready for you to paste into a Word document, an email, a note, whatever you need. If you're writing an email and you want to insert a website URL, there is no need to copy and paste. Just left click on the address bar in Safari and drag the URL straight into your email. This works for links on a page too. So if you want to share something like a restaurant's menu, you can just drag the menu link from the main site straight into your message without needing to open the full page. In most apps on your Mac, if you want to access the settings menu, the typical way to do this is to click the app name in the menu bar at the top and then choose settings from the dropdown. But there's actually a much quicker way to do this using a keyboard shortcut that works almost universally. Just press command and the comma key. If the app you're currently using has a settings menu, this shortcut will open it instantly. By the way, if you're enjoying these tips, you'll probably be interested in my upcoming Mac training portal, Mac Essentials Plus, which is literally hundreds of tips for the Mac, all in one place in video written and downloadable PDF format. It launches at the end of May. Scan the QR code or follow the link in the description if you want to be the first to know about it. You can easily customize the menu bar at the top right of your Mac screen just by using the command key. If you want to change the order that the icons appear in, simply press and hold the command key, then drag the icons left or right to rearrange them. And if there's anything up there that you'd rather not see, press and hold command, drag the icon down and off the menu bar and then let go. The app itself will still be on your Mac. This just removes the icon from the menu bar. When you take a screenshot on your Mac, you'll see a preview appear in the bottom corner of the screen. If you click on that preview, it opens up a quick editing window. In the top right corner, there's a little pen icon. Tap on that, then tap the squiggle icon on the left-hand side. This gives you a tool to sketch directly on your screenshot using your mouse. For example, you might draw a quick square around something that you want to highlight. As soon as you complete the shape, you'll notice a small pop-up just below your drawing. This gives you the option to stick with your original freehand sketch or replace it with a neater, auto-generated version of your shape. It works with squares, rectangles, circles, arrows, and more, making it a really quick and tidy way to annotate your screenshots. So last year, I bought a Vision Pro, and it's incredible. And my favorite thing about it is watching immersive 3D video, especially ones I took of my kids when they were just a few months old. Problem is, I didn't take very many videos. I wish I could take 2D videos from my iPhone and turn them into immersive 3D videos, which is why I was really excited to discover that you can, just not with the Vision Pro, with these, the Vitcher Pro XR glasses, which, by the way, cost a fraction of the price of one of these. Shout out to Vitcher for sponsoring this video. So basically put these on, attach them to a USB-C powered iPhone, Mac or iPad, download the app and that's it. You can view your entire photo and video library in breathtaking 3D, even though they weren't captured that way. It's amazing. And they offer all the other things you'd expect from smart glasses. Connect them to your phone and you can stream content on a massive display. Perfect for when you're traveling. Connect them to a Mac computer and you can run multiple windows at once, giving you a multi-monitor productivity setup in your pocket. My favorite setup though, is when you pair it with the Pro Dock, a Nintendo Switch, then Nintendo Switch mount, and this awesome controller, a collaboration between Vitcher and 8-Bit Doe. That setup gives you portable Switch gaming with a huge screen anywhere you go. It's incredible. And all of this for a really good price. If this sounds good to you, check out the link in the description to get your hands on a pair today. If you're looking to focus and get some proper work done, the best way to do this is to use Do Not Disturb. And the quickest way to access it is to hold down the Option key on your keyboard and click the date and time in the upper right menu of your screen. This will toggle Do Not Disturb on, and when you want to switch it back off, just repeat the process. The cut function, that's Command and X, doesn't work with files and folders on the Mac. So if you're trying to move something from one Finder window to another, pressing Command and X followed by Command and V won't work the way that it does in other apps. 
But there is a keyboard shortcut that fixes this. First, use Command and C to copy the file or folder, then go to the new location and press Command Option V. This will move the file, pasting it in the new spot and deleting it from the original. If there's a menu option in one of your favorite Mac apps that doesn't have a built-in keyboard shortcut, you can create one yourself. So here you can see that Zoom in Safari doesn't have one, so let's make one. First, go to System Settings, then choose Keyboard from the sidebar and click on Keyboard Shortcuts. Select App Shortcuts from the list on the left, then press the plus button. In the Application dropdown, choose Safari. For the menu title, type the exact name of the menu item, so in this case, it would be Zoom. Then click into the Keyboard Shortcut field and input your shortcut, something like Control, Option, Command, Z. Be mindful to choose a shortcut that doesn't conflict with an existing one. Press Done, then Done again to save it. Now, if you switch back to Safari and use that shortcut, you'll see the Zoom command run instantly. Instead of opening Safari, going to Google and then typing in a search, just press Command and Space to open Spotlight Search. Type in your query, then press Command and B. That will open a new Safari tab and automatically run the search for you. If you use a Mac, the F3 key is your shortcut for mission control, which is one of the most useful features the Mac OS has to offer. But if, like me, you use a Bluetooth keyboard, there is a good chance that your F3 key doesn't work for mission control. So here are a couple of other ways to access it. First, you can press Control and the up arrow on your keyboard. That opens mission control and pressing the same combination again will close it. The other method is to assign mission control to a hot corner. To do that, go into system settings, choose desktop and dock from the menu on the left and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Tap on hot corners. This lets you choose an action to trigger whenever you push your cursor into one of the corners of the screen. Let's say that you want to assign mission control to the bottom left corner. You would click on that corner, choose mission control from the drop down menu and press done. Now, every time you move your cursor to the bottom left corner, Mission Control will open, making it easy to switch between apps. Following on from that last tip, the only downside to hot corners is that by their nature, they're really easy to trigger by accident because just moving your cursor too close to one of the corners can be enough to set them off. But there is a way to make them more deliberate. Go back into System Settings, choose Desktop and Dock, scroll to the bottom and tap on Hot Corners. This time, instead of just selecting Mission Control or whichever function you want, from the drop down, hold down one or more modifier keys like Shift, Control, Option, or Command before choosing the action. So, for example, if I want Mission Control to trigger only when I move my cursor to the bottom left corner, but I'm also holding Command and Option, I'd hold those keys, select Mission Control from the drop down, and then press Done. Now, moving your cursor to the bottom left corner on its own won't do anything. But if you hold Command and Option while doing it, the hot corner triggers just like before. Only now, it happens on purpose. If you're enjoying the content here, why not sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is all about tech news and tips delivered free to your inbox each Friday. Sign up via the QR code on screen or the link in the description. You probably already know that when you're scrolling through files in Finder, pressing the space bar gives you a quick look preview of the selected file. And you can still use the up and down arrow keys to browse through your files while in preview. But if you press Option and Space instead, it will open that file in a full screen preview. If you like using the Recents folder in Finder, that's the smart folder that pulls together all of your recently opened or edited documents, there's a really handy keyboard shortcut that you should know, Option, Command and Up. This won't open the file itself, but it will open a new Finder window and take you straight to the folder where that file is actually located. If you're switching to a Mac from Windows, one thing you might notice straight away is that pressing the delete key doesn't actually delete files. And that's because on a Mac keyboard, the delete key is actually a backspace key, mainly used for editing text. But you can still delete files using a keyboard shortcut. Just select a file or folder in Finder, then press and hold the command key and tap backspace. That will move the selected item straight to your bin. If you'd rather skip the bin altogether and permanently delete the file right away, Hold down Command and Option, then press Backspace. Here are a few handy Safari keyboard shortcuts. If you hold the Command key and press the up arrow, it'll instantly scroll to the top of the web page that you're viewing. Press Command and the down arrow to jump all the way to the bottom. You can also navigate between pages using the arrow keys. Command and the left arrow takes you back a page. Command and the right arrow moves you forward again. If you've got a window on your Mac and you're happy with its current aspect ratio, but you want to make it larger or smaller, try this. Press and hold the Shift key while dragging any corner of the window. 
This keeps the shape the same while resizing it. And if you want the center of the window to stay in the same place while it resizes, press and hold both the Option and Shift keys while dragging. If you're not a fan of digging through the system settings layout on your Mac, and who is, try this instead. Right click on the system settings icon in your dock. You'll see an alphabetized list of all the top level settings. Just click on the one you want and your Mac will take you straight there. Or spotlight search, press command and space, type in the setting that you want, select it, and your Mac will take you right to it. You probably already know that pressing command and tab lets you toggle between your open apps. You might also know that you can press command shift and tab to move in the opposite direction, or with the command key held down, use the left and right arrow keys to move through your available apps. When you're ready to switch, just release the command key and the selected app will open. But there are a couple of extra tricks worth knowing. While you're in the app switcher, you can press command and H to hide the selected app or command and Q to quit it without going fully into it. Sticky notes is one of those features on the Mac that tends to fly under the radar, but it's really useful, especially if you're doing research. So let's say you're reading through a page in Safari and you wanna make quick notes as you go. A really simple way to do this is to select the text that you want to save and then press command shift Y. That instantly creates a sticky note containing the selected text. You can move the note to the side of your screen and just keep going. And then when you're finished, go to the top of the sticky notes menu, click on file and choose export all to notes. If it's your first time doing this, you might need to confirm a couple of prompts, but once you're done, your stickies will be saved in a new folder inside the notes app called imported notes. From there, you can rename and organize everything however you like. If you've copied text and pasted it somewhere else only to find that the formatting looks wrong, try pasting without formatting. This removes things like bold and italics and usually fixes most formatting issues. After copying using Command and C, press Command, Shift and V to paste without formatting. So there you go, 20 quick tips for the Mac. How many of them did you know? And have you got any good tips yourself that I didn't include? Leave them in the comments. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.